Shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. And next, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or whether they forbear. All right, this is going to be a breakdown of Micah, the fourth chapter. All right, and uh, it goes into end time prophecy. Okay, it touches on uh, what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like. It touches on the deliverance from this final captivity. Uh, the daughter of Babylon, also known as Babylon the Great. All right, and then it also touches on certain men of the Lord receiving uh, spiritual power and executing vengeance upon the heathen nations. All right, so some good prophetic stuff in this chapter. And uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Oh, but I do have one thing I want to mention. All right, I have a new playlist. Okay, the playlist is entitled um, To the Law and to the Testimony. Okay, and I'll, I'll go ahead and get the scripture that it that I uh, named it after. Isaiah 8 and 16. All right, it says, But bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. Okay, so the testimony of Yahweh Shai, which is the spirit of prophecy, Okay, and the law is sealed among the true disciples of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. So that's the inspiration for that playlist. I'm going to be uh, adding on videos where I do chapter breakdowns of prophecy and also chapter breakdowns in the law. All right. So that'll be uh, that's on my channel already. You can you can go to the playlist section to find that. All right. But anyways, without further ado. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, Micah, the fourth chapter. All right. Let me see something real quick. There we go. Okay, Micah chapter 4. All right, and the title of it in the blue letter says, Peaceful Latter Days. All right, this is um, Micah 4 and 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. All right, whenever you see that word mountain, okay, it, it, it means governments. Okay, when you see mountain, larger governments. When you see hills, smaller governments. Okay. So, but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow into it. Okay, why? Because when Yahweh Shai comes, he is going to set up a government, all right, a rulership. That's what a mountain is. It's a government that is going to rule over the earth in righteousness. Okay, let's go ahead and get a precept on that right quick. Isaiah, the ninth chapter. All right, Isaiah chapter 9. And I'm going to start here at verse uh, 6. All right, it says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Once again, that word mountain is talking about governments. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. All right. Verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. All right, upon the throne of David, that's the name of his his uh, government. All right, throne, uh, tabernacle of David, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. All right. So, okay, uh, when this government is established, it's going to reign forever and ever. All right. And when you go into that word government, okay, you go to the etymology of it. All right, that word govern means to control and meant means mental okay so everyone on the face of the earth is going to be forced to be under the vibration of the israelites all right we're going to teach the laws statutes and commandments to the heathen nations all right now going back okay michael 4 and 2 and many nations shall come and say let come and let us go up to the mountain of the yahweh and we see l-o-r-d lord in all caps talking about the heavenly father whose name is yahweh and to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth out of Zion, and the word of the Most High Yahweh from Jerusalem. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in the kingdom of heaven. All right, we're going to be teaching other nations our ways, teaching them the laws, the statutes, the commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, how to live righteously. Okay. Verse 3, it says, as a matter of fact, let's get a precept on that. Okay, let's get a precept on that. They're also... They're going to follow our high holy days. All right, all that stuff. All right, ain't going to be no more Christmas, Easter, none of that. 
All right, Zechariah, the 14th chapter. And I'm going to start at, I'm going to go ahead and skip around. I'm going to start at verse 9, though. It says, And the Lord, Yahweh, shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. Okay, so a lot of people say, oh, he has many different names. You can call on his name in different languages. But no, according to prophecy, he revealed to his elect his one true name in the Paleo-Hebrew tongue. And you have people all around the world, as we speak right now, speak English, Spanish, French, Tagalog, Dutch. You even got a sign language camp, and they all call upon the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, all over the world. So there's no excuse. But in that day, all right, his name shall be one. Many titles. He has many titles, but only one name. Okay. Continuing on. All right, it says um, Zechariah 14. And what is that? Zechariah 14. And let's see. Okay, verse 17. It shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So he's going to bring a famine upon them. And if the family of Egypt go not up, go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will, will smite the heathen that come not up to, to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is a high holy day. All right. It says, and the family of, and uh, excuse me, verse um, 19, this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So they're going to follow our laws, our statutes, our commandments, and our, our high holy days. All right. So let's go, uh, let's see. Let's go back. Okay. All right. And we'll get um, now Micah chapter 4. All right. And verse 3. It says, And he shall judge, he shall judge among many people, and shall rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Right? And nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Alright, so this means that there's not going to be any more wars going on because the Heavenly Father is going to be controlling the whole earth. Alright, and the Heavenly Father, start, and then Yahweh Shai, okay, and then King David, and 144,000, the men on down, they're going to be governors and rulers over the people of the earth. Alright, so there's not going to be any, any wars going on after that final war of Armageddon. Okay, the Lord is going to come and put down all heathen rulership and take over the earth forever. Alright. Okay, verse 4. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all the people will walk every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Okay, now what does this mean? Alright. So, we saw that uh, every nation is going to be forced to come and worship the king, the heavenly father, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, so then, so when it says this here, everyone shall walk in the name of his God, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have no, no Muslims, no Hindus, uh, no, no uh, Christians, none of that, okay? Everyone is going to worship the Holy One of Israel and follow his ways. But, okay, when you go to, this is the reason why it's important to look up words. We go into the Mesoretic text, all right, where we're able to see the Hebrew words, okay, for the word God. Everyone shall walk in the name of his God. Okay, the word is Elohim. In the Paleo Hebrew, it's pronounced Allahayim. All right, and it means rulers, judges, divine ones. Okay, the works or special possessions of the Most High. So essentially, when it says that everyone, I go back. Oh, Salaki. Okay, when it says that everyone shall walk in the name of His God. All right, what does that mean? Everyone shall walk in the name of His ruler, His judge, whatever uh, brother of the hundred forty-four thousand. Is set up to rule over different heathen nations. For example, maybe the Lord will say, and this is, you know, we don't we don't know, you know, exactly, but you know, Lord's will be that number, right? The Lord will say, oh, all right, brother Yawasov, you're gonna rule over this province in China, you know, and I'm gonna give you this land to, to rule over. Okay, so the nations are gonna have to come to us to get their to be connected to the heavenly Father. All right, that's what it means. So they're gonna be they're gonna be our possessions. Okay, the same way that we are. The possessions of the Heavenly Father, all right? And your, your, your Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai, we are their possessions, okay? The heathen nations 
are going to be our possessions in that day. All right. So they're going to walk in the name. They're going to walk in our name and they're going to be connected to the source through us. OK, that's what it means to be a priest, which the Lord said. Let's go ahead and get it right quick. Revelation. Revelations 11. Excuse me. Revelation chapter one and verse six. All right. It says, and have made us kings and priests unto the most high and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Okay, we get the definition of a priest. All right, a priest. It says, a religious leader authorized to perform the sacred rituals of a religion. A priest is a religious leader authorized to perform the sacred rituals of religion, especially as a mediatory agent between humans and one or more deities. All right, so we are going to be the same way that Yahweh Shai, he is our high priest. All right, to the Heavenly Father. He's our connection to the Heavenly Father. No man can come to the Heavenly Father except through him. It's going to be the same way with these heathen nations. They're going to, that's why it said that they're going to come to us and the law shall go forth out of Zion. All right, they're going to come to us to learn the law, statutes, commandments, and to be connected to the source. Okay, so Micah 4 and 5, for all people will walk everyone in the name of his God. All right, with a small, small God, small G, meaning judge or ruler. And we will walk in the name of our, the walk in, excuse me, walk in the name of the Lord, Yahweh, our God forever and ever. Okay. So we're going to be one with the Heavenly Father. All right. Through the new covenant. Okay. Let's go ahead and get that right quick. All right. We're going to be joined into the Heavenly Father. Oh, Salakia. Jeremiah 31 and 31. All right. We're going to be joined into the Heavenly Father and be one with him. Okay. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. All right, and it just pretty much goes into the stipulations of it, telling you what it all is. I'm not going to read it all. All right, but essentially, okay, I'm just going to read verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Okay, and they shall no more teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. All right. Also, biblically, to know someone, okay, to know means that you have had biblical sexual relations with that person. You've penetrated that woman. That's what it means when you when you biblically know a woman, you've penetrated her. All right. Well, we are the we are the uh, the spiritual spouse of the heavenly Father. Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, okay? So it says that all shall know me, all right, meaning we're going to be joined, okay, joined to the Lord. Because when a man and a woman come together, all right, they are now one flesh. They are, they are joined together, all right? It's going to be the same way with us and the Heavenly Father via Yahweh Shai, all right? Hence the, the term, the marriage chambers, okay? It always talks about us going to the marriage chambers, which is the chariots, okay? When we get, when this, when this society is destroyed, we get beamed up. All right, at that point, in the twinkling of an eye, we'll be perfected, and we're going to be joined unto the Lord in the new covenant forever from, from there on out, okay? So, when it says that uh, we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever, okay? Because he's, he's going to still be our power through Yahweh Shai, and to the nations, the heathen nations, okay, they're going to be, uh, they're going to have connection to the source through us, and we're going to teach them his ways, Continuing on, Michael 4 and 6. In that day, say, if Yahweh will I assemble her that halteth, and will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. All right, that's talking about us. Okay, we were the ones that have been afflicted. We went through the curses. Okay, none of the other nations are up under the curses. All right, Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 18. And I'm speaking of, excuse me, Zephaniah. My bad. I'm speaking of uh, the curses written of in Deuteronomy 28th chapter and Leviticus 26. All right, this is Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 18. Okay, it says, I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. All right, so he's going to gather those that were of the reproach of the Lord. Okay, verse 19, behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee and I will, I will save her that halteth and gather her that was driven out because according to the curses we were scattered throughout the nations. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. And Lord knows that Jacob, especially the so-called Negroes, especially the so-called Negroes, but all the tribes have been put to shame. All right. You know, we're proverb and a byword, most hated. All right. By all the nations. Okay. 
and that you know the the prophecies attest to that all right when when we were when we got uh, cast down the nations rejoiced okay let's get this right quick when they swallowed us up they rejoiced lamentations the first chapter Lamentations chapter 1 and verse 21. All right. It says, They have heard that I sigh. There is none to comfort me. All mine enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that thou hast done it. Thou will bring the day that thou hast called, and they shall be like unto me. Okay. So that's essentially when we receive our salvation. Okay. The enemies, our enemy uh, nations will go into the curses that we are up under right now. Okay. So everything is going to be reversed. All right, so that's what it's talking about. But they were happy, says that they were glad that thou hast done it. All right. So going back, Zephaniah chapter three. Zephaniah chapter three, and verse uh, twenty. And at that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth, when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Okay. So he's gonna gather. He's going to gather the ones that were under that reproach, under those curses, okay, the most hated. All right, this is Isaiah 62 and verse 11. Behold, Yahweh hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. This is why we must, this is why the gospel must be preached throughout the four corners of the earth, because the Israelites are scattered. Okay, it says, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, that's who it's for, Behold, thy salvation cometh, thy possessive, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. All right, so say unto the ends of the world, to the daughter of Zion, your salvation cometh. Verse uh, six, uh, verse 12, excuse me. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Okay, as we go back to Micah, the fourth chapter, all right, we were uh, driven out and we were afflicted. Okay, so he's going to assemble us. He's going to gather the driven out and the afflicted together to be delivered. Okay, verse 7. Micah 4 and 7, and I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast off a strong nation, and Yahweh shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. All right, what does it mean he's going to make us a remnant? Well, it tells us that not all Israelites are going to be saved on his side. Okay, he's going to deliver us as a nation, but it starts off with the elect. All right, this is Isaiah the 10th chapter. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped to the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but they shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. All right, so we're not going to be up under Esau, Edom, the so-called white men again. Okay, we're never going to be up under our enemies ever again. Okay, it says, The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, there's, there's millions and billions of Israelites, right? There's more of us than there is of them. Okay, though that people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. All right, so only a remnant is going to be delivered and return unto the Lord in the times that we're coming into. That's why I said, I will make her that halted a remnant and her that was cast off a strong nation because the elect is going to inherit those blessings. All right, Michael 4 and 8. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee, Shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Okay, so, O and thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Who is this talking about? It's talking about Yahweh Shai. Okay, the heavenly father and his only begotten son, their names are strong tower, and the righteous run into it and is safe. This is Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of Yahweh is a strong tower, the righteous runneth into it and is safe. Okay, and now we go back. We're going to go back to Micah 4 and read that verse again. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Who is the stronghold of the daughter of Zion? Talking about specifically. It's talking about Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, let's, let's get some context. Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. All right, and I'm going to skip down. Verse 12, turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Okay, so Yahweh is the stronghold. Okay, he's, he's our stronghold of hope. 
and we're turning unto him. And he said, I would have rendered double unto thee, meaning we're going to receive double joy for all of our pain, sorrow, and suffering. All right. Let's get another scripture. Thy king has come. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. Okay, this is a this is a verse. I can't remember exactly where it's at, but it's in my mind. Boom. Zephaniah 9, 3 and 15. Yahweh hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The king of Israel, even Yahweh, is in the midst of thee. And thou shalt not see evil anymore. Okay. So, we go back to Micah 4 and 8, that stronghold. Okay, Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh all right, even to thee, okay, shall the first the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. All right, the kingdom is going to go to the daughter of Jerusalem. Why? Because the kingdom was promised to Yahweh Shai. All right, and Yahweh Shai is going to share that with us. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 and verse, um, let's see, Isaiah 53. And verse 11, talking about Yahweh Shai, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. All right, so he's going to he's gonna divide him a portion with the great. It was promised to him the kingdom. He just had to fulfill his role first, which he already did. Okay, this is Psalms, the second chapter. Psalms chapter 2 and verse 7. I will declare the decree Yahweh has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. And thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Okay, so here... The Heavenly Father promised Yahweh Shai, the heathen, as an inheritance in the uttermost parts of the earth for his possession. All right. And going back to Micah, the fourth chapter, okay, it says that the strong tower, all right, he's going to receive the first dominion and the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Why? Because the Lord, we are married unto him. We are the daughter of Zion, okay, that, that is getting ready to be to enter into the marriage chambers with Yahweh Shai. All right. And we're going to be joint heirs of that inheritance, okay? Just like our, just like here in the in the physical, okay, the women that are joined unto the men of the Lord, they're going to be joint heirs of the kingdom, because they're attached to us. Okay, we're joint heirs of the kingdom because we are attached to Yahweh Shai. Okay, so let's go ahead and get us an, another scripture on that. Revelation, the second chapter, and this is a, a this quotes what we just read in Psalms, the second chapter. Okay, so Revelation chapter two quotes Psalms chapter two. Revelation two, in verse twenty six. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. All right. So we just read where he received that from his father in Psalms, the second chapter. Okay. So we're joint heirs. The daughter of Zion, the daughter of Jerusalem, okay, the elect is joint heirs with Yahweh Shai to inherit the kingdom. Okay. But what? Micah 4 and 9. Now why dost thou cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. Because of our iniquity, we, we went through the curses. All right, we're still under the curses. Okay. Well, fellas, get a quick precept on that. Uh, for all these things have I done this unto you. Let's see. I think it's in Jeremiah. Okay, for all of our iniquity. <sighs> nope. Let's, let's search it up again. For all of your iniquity. Oh, crap. Salaki. So Not too good with typing. For all of your iniquity have I done this to you. Let's try that. KJV. Let's see what comes up. Mm. Isaiah. Okay, Jeremiah 30 and 14. Yep, yep, that, that works. That cuts it. That's, I don't think that's the scripture I was looking for. I think I was looking for something in Jeremiah 2nd chapter. But Jeremiah 30. I right, definitely 
uh, brings it out too. So that's, that's a good scripture. I'll, I'll get that one. Okay, and we'll go back and read. All right, we'll go back and read what we read here in Micah the fourth chapter again. Okay, Micah chapter four and verse um, nine is where we were. Now, why dost thou cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. Pangs is talking about pain. All right, we're in pain because of our own wickedness. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers forgotten thee, they seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I think this is the one I was looking for, actually. Jeremiah 30 and 15. Okay, why criest thou for thine afflictions? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Yep, so this is the one. Okay, good. I got I got to remember that. Get that in my long-term memory banks. Okay, but yeah. All right, so all these things he did because of our wickedness. All right, and he said, all right, going back to Lachia, Micah 4 and 9, is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? All right, because it tells you here in Hosea, I think it's 4 and 3. Nah, 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 it's 3 and 4. Hosea 3 and 4, boom, here it is. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without teraphim. Okay, so pretty much we're going to discontinue from our heritage. Right? That, that's, a, that's a prophecy we go into all the time. Okay, I'm going to make a video on that soon as well, Lord's will. All right, but going back, okay, we, have, we had no king. We had no counselor. No one to comfort us, you know, during the times of major affliction, slavery, you know, the true American, you know, um, true, I don't want to say the word, the true American hollow, all right, what happened to the so-called natives, okay, verse 10, it says, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail, for now thou shalt go forth out of the city, all right, we, we, we got pushed out of Jerusalem, and shall dwell in the field, all right, and the so-called Negroes, Fled to what's known as West Africa. All right, let's get proof of that right quick. There's, that's in the scriptures, but also there's historical evidence of that as well. Um, so let's go here to Negro Land Map. All right, uh, and it's in the Library of, of um, this is the Library of Congress website. So it's not. This is the credible source. Okay, it's an old slave map that the slavers used to use. All right, so. You can read it for yourself, librarycongress.gov. All right, and we'll go ahead and, and zoom in on it. And you can see for yourself right there. What does it say? Right here. Kingdom of Judah or Weta Slave Coast. In the French, Weta. Kingdom of Judah or Weta Slave Coast. Okay, so this is where we got picked up from slavery. I right, went into captivity to meet up with our brethren here in the Americas, the Northern Kingdom. Okay, and that's, there's also proof of that in the scriptures as well. It says that. We were afflicted together. That's how we know America Babylon the Great is America Babylon the Great because we came here to be afflicted together. All right, the same thing that happened to the so-called Negroes happened also to the Latinos and Native American Indians. All right, they were put, they were enslaved and had their land stolen. All right, Jeremiah 50 and 33. Thus saith Yahweh, power of hosts, the children of Israel, the northern kingdom, and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. All right. Fire. Okay. So it says, uh, Michael 4 and 10, Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now, for now thou shalt go forth out of the city. We got pushed out of, our, out of our city, Jerusalem. And thou shalt dwell in the field. We fled. All right. We fled all over, but uh, a good chunk of, of the southern kingdom, okay, the Judites, uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi fled into West Africa. I just proved that with historical documentation. They knew exactly who they were picking up. Okay, they knew that we were the tribe of Judah. All right. And thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. Because okay, so we came here to be oppressed together with our brethren, and also to be delivered together. There thou shalt be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Okay. Because why? According to the curses... According to the curses, it told us no man could redeem us. Many have tried to liberate and 
and earn equal rights for the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians. All right, but that's Yahushua's job. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Okay, we went to this. We came over here on cargo slave ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. See, a Christian will tell you. See, he says no man's gonna buy you. Where? Well, which one is it? Said so you shall be sold. When you when when something is sold, that means it's bought. Okay, you you had to put you paid money for it. All right. When it says no man shall buy you, it means no man shall redeem you. Okay, I mean it's really, it's really stupid. But they they try to do anything they can to try to discredit the Israelites. But there's not only biblical evidence, but also um, historical evidence as well that we are the Israelites of the Bible. Okay, and that's the reason why we don't know who we who we are before because the nations have joined themselves together to hide that information from us, according to Psalms 83rd chapter. But when it says no man shall buy you. Okay, Strong's H7069, okay, that's the number, and it's a verb, okay, that word means to what? Okay, it means to get, acquire, create, buy, possess, let's see, okay, Strong's definitions, right here it says, to prov I'm, and I'm reading from right here, starting on down, to provoke, to jealousy, possess, purchase, recover, redeem, all right, no man shall redeem you, okay, and also, it tells us that Yahweh Shai is going to be the one to redeem us. All we got to do is go here to the word redeem, search it up, and there's many prophecies on that. All right, bear with me. I'll find a few. Oh, you know what? I know exactly where one is. Okay, well, here's one right here. Psalm 69 and 18. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Psalm 71. Actually, you know what? Okay, I started. I get Psalm seventy-four and two. Re Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed, this Mount Zion wherein thou hast dwelt. Okay, Psalm seventy-seven and fifteen. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed my, thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. <laughs> Straight up, man. It's just easy. Psalm 78 and 35, and they remembered their God, that God was their rock and the high God, their redeemer. Oh, so this is the one I was looking for, actually. Psalms 106 and 10, this is the one I was thinking of. All right, it says, and he saved them from the hand of them that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. All right, Psalms 107 and 2. Okay, it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who hath he redeemed from the hand of thine enemy? I mean, it's, it's simple, man. All right. Isaiah 1 and 27. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. Okay. Psalms 136 and 24. And hath redeemed us from our enemies for his mercy endures forever. So, okay, that's what it's talking about. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Right here in America, Babylon the Great. Michael 4 and 11. Now also many nations that are gathered against thee. That say, let her be defiled, and let our eye look upon Zion. All right, all the nations are gathered together against us. Okay, they swallowed us up. Hosea, actually not Hosea. Lamentations, chapter 2. All right, all the nations are, are against us. Okay. Lamentations 2 and verse 15. Excuse me, 16. Okay, it says, all thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say we have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we looked for. We have found. We have seen it. All right. So they, they were they were looking forward to this. Okay. Let's get this right quick. Uh, I think it's 1 Maccabees 2 and 10. It says, what nation has not gotten of her spoils? Yep, this is it. 1 Maccabees 2 and 10. What nation hath not had part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? All these heathen nations are against us, man. And Jake thinks that the people of the world are, is his friend. And they're going to find out the hard way. Okay, a lot of our people are going to get deleted in this time we're coming into. Okay, Micah 4 and 12. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither, neither understand they his counsel, for he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. All right, let's go back. All right, and it says right here. Okay, let me see. Actually, no, no, it's a lot in my bad. Um, I'll read the next verse. Okay, Micah 4 and 13. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and a horn represents power, and I will make thy hooves brass, and
and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. Okay, so it says we're going to go to war with the nations, beat them in, beat them into powder, all right, and consecrate their gain unto the Lord. We're going to take their wit, their wealth, and their riches. All right, let's get a precept on that. Zechariah 14 and 14. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel and great abundance. We're going to take everything that they own. Everything that the heathen nations own is going to be transferred to the children of Israel. All right, we're going to consecrate their gain to the Lord. Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah 51. And I'm going to start at verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Say, okay, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces man and woman, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young, and with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. So you, you get the point. All right, you get the point. Okay. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. I'm going to read verse 6 and 7. Okay, it says, But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord, and men shall call you the ministers of our God, and ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. So we're going to be we're going to take all their wealth and boast ourselves in their glory. For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in the land they shall possess the double, everlasting joy shall be unto them. All right, beautiful. Okay, so we're getting, we're preparing to be delivered and inherit all the riches, the wealth of the world, of this earth. Okay, and that's a part of the kingdom and the promises that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai has given to us. All right, let's go ahead and close out with this. Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. All right, I'm going to start there. It says, Blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he sware to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Okay? And see, this is, this is what Christians don't get. All right? The promises were never meant for all nations. How is the Lord going to deliver us from the hand of our enemies and also bring our enemies to rule in the kingdom with us? It doesn't make sense. Okay, This is why I always say that you, there's no possible way that you can read and understand prophecy and still be a Christian, still believe in Christian doctrine. Okay, Because it's fully contradictory. They contradict each other. Okay, So the Bible don't contradict each other. Christianity contradicts the Bible. Okay, but anyways, all right, that's pretty much it. That's the breakdown of Micah, the fourth chapter. All right, just a you know, quick overview. Okay, first goes into how we're going to teach the nations the ways of the Lord and the kingdom of heaven. All right, and then you know, the Lord is you know, pleading, pleading with us, you know, saying, Hey, like, um, I'm going to gather you. You know, I've, I've the one I've been the one that afflicted you, and now I'm getting ready to gather you. I brought you here to America, Bell on the Great, to be delivered. Okay. And then it goes into how the nations are going to gather up against us. They're going to persecute us as they already have been for thousands of years. But in this great tribulation, we're getting ready to see the grand finale of persecution. All right. But the Lord is going to deliver us. He's going to give certain men spiritual power and make them his battle acts and weapons of war. And they're going to judge the heathen and take the kingdom as the scriptures say. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and get that. We'll close out with that. Okay. Daniel 7 and 18. Okay. All right, and it reads, it says, But the saints of the Most High, the Israelites, shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. All right. Lord's will is edifying as always. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakodash. And until next time, Shalom.